Hi everyone, this is Francesco and you are in City Go Roundabout and thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate, we all really appreciate the effort. So like I said, a little bit about us and then straight into why you're here today, just to check the European Attention. What are we going to talk about today? Sorry? Climate tech, yes, climate tech. And so about me, if you don't know me already, I'm an engineer. I uh, help grow this community with my co-founder, Paul, that is right there at the back. So, um, yes, can I actually have a big round of applause for Paul? And also for Rita, for Amar, Amar is your hand right there. Uh, we've got an amazing team here, so you don't know about Slack. He couldn't join us, but he's probably online checking things um, remotely. And about us, and now I'm stuck again. Next, next. Next. Manually, next. Oh yeah, it all started like that. So this very nice fancy venue, thank you very much Hackletry for hosting, is actually a big upgrade from where we started from, a pub near Old Street Roundabout, where ultimately what we wanted to do was to bring together an engineer like myself, with entrepreneurs uh, like Paul and uh, people in the ecosystem, angels and other founders, to maybe just exchange ideas and try and build new ventures. And thankfully, we managed to outgrow our initial team, and uh, like you've seen Reed on stage, and Amar, and of course, this is the full-time teams, but like, you know, Amar, for example, is helping us now for a few months. Uh, we're always growing and ultimately managed to build something much bigger than just a new pub. Napa. We're now 15,000 and you're officially part of this big community. Well, have you ever, have you come before to the city on the back, by the way? Can I see a show of hands for anybody that's joined us? So about half uh, of the audience have come before and that's normally what we do because we want to try and target different targets and every time bring new founders, new engineers up to meet what's hot in the startup landscape. But of course, we also have members that continue to come through the events and get value from it because even though every time we try to shift the topic a little bit, we obviously circle back every about a year and ultimately focusing on what we call deep tech, advanced technologies, either in software or hardware. We don't really touch anything life science related because we, the ecosystem tends to be a little bit still up there, different in terms of the pharma, etc. But anything in hardware, anything relating to software that is advanced, that is trying to change the world and solving big problems, we try to help. And we help by bringing together what's now a long list of universities and academic partners with corporates and SMEs and startups that are the core of this community, the founders, with the engineers and the broader network, which involves investors, angels, etc. And today, like you rightly got before, we're talking about climate. Because if you haven't noticed, <laughs> We are fucking things up. And it's now finally done to us, and not just to people, but also to the broader ecosystem, that if we don't start to make a change, and that change actually having an impact, we're not going to fix things. But thankfully, like I said, it's now not necessarily something that just, you know, us as people can be activists about and vocal about, but there is a, a real shift. There is a shift in policy, and there is also a shift in customer behavior at corporate level, at semi level, so across various industries. And so if governments and corporates are both starting to notice the impact that our carbon footprint and our impact on the environment as a species are having, that is ultimately creating more opportunities. And if that wasn't clear to you, you can just start to check that ultimately things like Electric vehicles, that if you remember just a decade ago, wasn't even a thing. You know, at the end of the day, uh, we <laughs> would have not dreamt that, that that could have been an industry. I still remember debating with mates a few a couple of years back. Oh, EVs are never going to take off. I mean, the people were genuinely arguing passionately that that was the case, and obviously that is just not going to be the case. I mean, it's not about our opinion anymore. But this is how rapidly the world shifted. And because there is a massive shift, normally shift means opportunity. That at least in venture capital and startup language, that's what shift means. Shift means more investment, 
because there is more attention, there is more possibility for that investment to create returns, and ultimately that fuels innovation. And that is what we're looking for in the venture capital ecosystem. Innovation that can create ultimately a huge increase in value because at the end of the day, venture capital is, even with an impact, is not a charity, it has to create returns, otherwise it just doesn't continue to cycle. So what about the term turn? You know, climate is great, impact investing is great, but ultimately right now there is a little bit of market slowdown. The reality though is that, at least for what uh, climate is concerned, it's actually showing more resilience than say other parts of venture capital. And in my opinion, based on looking at this data, this is probably and primarily due to the fact that there is a huge push that is now much bigger than the ecosystem per se. So governments are looking to allocate funds and that budget has been decided years ago and it keeps being decided. And that happens also at corporate level where strategies are set in motion and down change immediately just because of a, an initial market downturn. However, that is also creating more opportunities which in return means the ecosystem can carry forward. And ultimately then that difference is the fact that there is a lot of money out there already set aside for this, both in terms of purchasing power and in terms of investment opportunity. Investment opportunity. And I'm stuck, so next. Next. Yeah, I mean, that was supposed to go up straight away and just like, wow, you know, this is happening and it's worth billions. So obviously, climate is just a big umbrella term. What we mean is actually different industries. And that is interesting because I don't know how many of you were working in tech sector some years ago, but there was a big sort of branding term uh, called the green investing and the green startups, you know, the sort of clean tech revolution that didn't quite take off and didn't quite generate the right returns, but also didn't quite have the impact that it was targeted to have. Climate tech is a little bit different and it's showing way more resilience. It's, way, it's showing resilience even in, at this point in time when there is a little bit of a downturn. It's showing resilience because it's also differentiating. It's not just a single thing like renewable energy. It's actually a movement of innovation and venture backable businesses across different verticals and different industries and different markets targeting not only the electric vehicle system, which is now a huge supply chain, created opportunities across that supply chain, but also the way we use computing. And, you know, we're, for example, today we're going to hear from a startup that is doing just that, measuring the impact that computation is having and on the, on the, on the planet. And so the only real way we have to fix what we started doing as a species is ultimately creating innovation, not just in one segment, whether it's renewable energy or whether it's anything like that, but actually across the sector. Solving problems in climate, across the energy, across the computing, across the industrial, and across all the other sectors that ultimately require energy or consume energy as an ultimately have an impact on the planet. And so climate fits within the narrative that we've been trying to shape also here at Silicon Roundabout, that deep tech and advanced technologies are building a new type of infrastructure of technology. And this technological infrastructure is important for venture capital and startups because just like computing in the 70s and 80s created originated the internet boom and then the cloud infrastructure originated the B2B SaaS boom when it felt that anybody could just make money in VC or build billion dollar unicorns uh, just with some line of codes but that needed an infrastructure to get there and ultimately that's what we need today and we are seeing businesses that are creating a new fabric that will empower a new wave of innovation that is going to be way bigger just by comparing what happened with the first wave and then the second wave than everything we've seen before across industries such as climate, verticals, uh, including the climate space, but also in the computing in general, semiconductors, robotic space, and all of these verticals are actually, it's like if you're gonna a fan and, you're like, and you've got this huge opening of sectors and sub-verticals, so a new bunch of unicorns create purchasing power for new startups that can now grow, and so that is creating a domino effect. But any revolution needs funding. 
And so, and this is basically just a very short ending to leave you with something. Last time, if you were here, you would have noticed me jumping on stage, all excited to tell everybody the City Go Roundabout is finally going to have its first venture fund. So we went away, we did some work, and so today what we want to tell you is that we finally have our first investment as a fund, a seed investment, I cannot just quite tell you the name, but it's coincidentally, and it's not, uh, it wasn't designed, it's in the climate space. Uh, it took three months to put the together. Uh, the fund is not quite live pretty much yet, uh, but thankfully we already have some early backers and we've managed to make our first deal. It's a community startup we've been following for two years, it's been part of the meetups, mostly online because uh, of COVID. And finally now we've managed to get back meeting person and it's been amazing to join their funding round and uh, soon being able to announce it. How much? <laughs> 250,000 uh, pounds. There we go. So if you want to know more and follow the journey of this fund and this community, if you're a startup, you can just go ahead on sleeponeabout.tech uh, and you'll find all the information there. Uh, if you're more interested on the investment side and knowing what's happening with this fund, since again we're still building it, you can go on sleeponeabout.ventures uh, forward slash investors. So I'm going to leave that up there to take some pictures. But ultimately, that's it from me because what we're really here for is to hear from the community, to hear from the startups that we've selected. It's been really hard because we've seen a lot of great pitches to bring you tonight uh, some of the very best uh, we've come across like, uh, amongst the community. Uh, but ultimately, that's what we're here for. So thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoy this little deep dive on climate and let's enjoy the startup presentations. And before that, a uh, quick um, guest speech from our guest tonight. So thank you very much. A big round of applause.